Hi everyone, in this video I will show you how to set up and run a simulation model using Excel. We've talked about simulation, simulation process, and algorithm in the previous video. You may know that Oracle has built an Excel template called Crystal Ball, which has a lot of features to help run the simulation easier. And you're welcome to try that Crystal Ball application. It's a popular one and free. You just need to register with Oracle. You have the access code to the new book. Crystal Ball comes with that access code. Otherwise, you can find the link to Crystal Ball, register, and get that Excel template. In this example, I will build everything from scratch. That will help you understand the whole process and understand the simulation method better. So this is a simulation with one ATM, or we can call it one ATM simulation. Again, we have two probabilistic inputs, inter-arrival time and service time. Inter-arrival time is the first input, and it follows the uniform distribution. And here we have A and B, and I call the smallest number A and the largest number B. So these are the parameters of the uniform distribution. The textbook chapter explains some other probabilistic distributions as well, such as exponential distribution and Poisson distribution that we can use. In this case, we have A is 0 and B is 5. The way I set up the simulation in this Excel example would allow you to go back and change these parameters and see how the whole system behaves given these changes. And the simulation does all calculation automatically. The second input is the service time and it follows the normal distribution. The normal distribution has two characteristics, mean and standard deviation. Mean is 2 minutes and standard deviation is 0.5 minutes given by the questions. And note that later we can change these values to form what if scenarios. So we can change these parameters based on changing environment in that location and we can see how the model behaves. Now we can build the simulation. Simulation is again a mathematical model that represents a real system and you can do experiment with. Through a number of experiments with this model, we can see how the system works and behaves before selecting the decisions for the actual system. For the first column, we have trials, in this case representing customers. I will do it a little differently with the textbook. In here, I add another column for random value and call it random value. The textbook adds the random function inside other formulas, but I want to separate the random function so I can see what random values I get and I can keep track of how system works and if it works correctly. The random function generates random values continuously over time so if we have different random numbers for different columns, it will be very difficult to check the numbers. So this is really to help me double check my formula. The next column is inter-arrival time and arrival time. Arrival time will be determined based on inter-arrival time. Then we have start time. This is the time when a customer can start using the ATM. Next is waiting time. If a customer arrives but cannot start using the ATM immediately, he will have to wait. Next is the service time. This is the amount of time that a customer needs to spend on ATM to complete all banking transactions. Then we have completion time, 
which is the point of time that the customer finishes using machine and then leaves the ATM machine. The final variable is the time in system, which is total amount of time that the customer spends in the system, including waiting time and the time using the machine. Let's set up the first trial. The first trial of the first customer is the initiation point of the simulation, so it will be different from the second customer. From the second customer forward, the process will be repeating itself. So we need to be careful with the first trial. First, how to generate a random values in Excel. Excel has a random function equal sign R A N D parentheses. And we just use open and close parentheses without anything inside to get the random value. Once we hit enter, we can see that it generates a random value between 0 and 1. There is an issue that we'll see later, so we should fix it now. Let's go to formula tab on the ribbon. You'll see the calculation option and it checked automatic. What does it mean? That means whenever we click somewhere or run any cell in this Excel spreadsheet, random values are generated spontaneously. It doesn't affect the results, but we might find it annoying because all of our outcomes will be changing frequently. So we can't even check to see if the formulas are correct or not. We want to keep the random value the same and in control when we build the simulation. To fix this, we just go back to the calculation option and check manual. That means the system only recalculates the random values whenever we want it to. How to recalculate manually? We just need to hit F9. Whenever we hit F9, the system will recalculate. It does not do it automatically. So that is the random value. Let's move to interarrival time. We will have to generate interarrival time using the uniform distribution. You will need to remember the formula for uniform distribution function that we discussed before. Let me show the formula again. Here's a formula for interarrival time. 0 plus r times phi minus 0, which is equal to phi r. Now I want to keep a and b in the Excel formula instead of actual numbers because later I want to change these parameters to see how the system will change accordingly. So to include A in the formula, we just click on cell B4. Remember, later we will generate a thousand trials by copying the formula and we will need to refer back to the same cell. If you're familiar with Excel, when you copy a formula, the cell locations will change which will affect our formula. This is called relative reference. In order for the formula to work through this copying process, we need to use absolute references for this cell. To do that, we have to add the dollar sign in front of both column and row references. All I have to do is hit F4. Let me show again. Equal sign, click A, Hit F4, which applies absolute re reference, plus random value. Note that random value is not absolute reference because it will change. So I just put it in there. Times B and F4 minus A. Hit F4. Now we have the Excel formula and hit Enter. So this trial with the random value of 0.8. The interval time is about 4 minutes. That means between the zero customer and the first customer, there is a 4 minute gap. So what does it mean? The first customer arrives at this interval time because it takes him 4 minutes to arrive to the ATM machine. As for the start time, seeing he is the first customer, there's no one in front of him, so he doesn't actually have to wait. In this case, the start time is equal to the arrival time. 
Now remember, this formula up only applies to the first customer. Next, the formula for waiting time is equal to the start time minus arrival time. Remember, I do not use the dollar sign for the absolute reference in here because arrival time and start time will change based on customer. Next is the service time. Don't forget that you can go back to this one and see the arrival time and start time. Start time will depend on the arrival time, but for the customer, start time is equal to arrival time, and the waiting time is actually zero. So now we formulate the service time. The service time follows the normal distribution. So we have to use Excel function called N O R M I N V. The first parameter is the probability. In this case, the random value. The random value will generate a random probability value. The second parameter is mean. Mean of service time here is 2. And again, this is a fixed number or absolute reference. Next is a standard deviation. So type comma and click on 0.5, hit F4, close parenthesis. This is how to get the service time using the normal distribution. So according to this random value of 0.8, the service time for the first customer is about 2.4 minutes. Remember, this is an experiment or trial which is generated by the random variable and the probability distribution functions that allow us to experiment with the system. Next is completion time. Completion time is equal to start time plus service time. Again, start time plus service time equals completion time. And the time in the system is completion time minus arrival time. And we can see the results here. So let's look at this first customer very quickly. The random value for customer 1 is 0.8. Inter arrival time with that random value is 4 minutes. So the first customer comes in after 4 minutes from the time 0. The arrival time is 4 minutes. Start time is also 4 minutes because he doesn't have to wait or the waiting time is zero the service time generated from the normal distribution is 2.4 minutes and therefore the completion time is start time plus service time or 6.4 minutes the time in the system is equal to completion time minus arrival time which is 6.4 minus 4 equals 2.4 minutes Remember, the customer finished all banking transactions within 2.4 minutes, which does not count the waiting time. Now let's say the second customer comes in, or the second trial, and here's the random value. So I just copy it down. If you're familiar with the fill in function of Excel, you know how to do it. We just move the pointer to the right corner and drag it down. In this case, since I do not recalculate, Excel gives me the same random value. I will do it later. The formula for inter-arrival time is very much the same, except the random value will change, so we just need to drag it down. However, the arrival time will be different. Let's look at this formula. Arrival time of the second customer is equal to arrival time of the first customer plus Inter arrival time. So here we have the formula arrival time of the second customer is equal to arrival time of the first customer plus the time gap or inter arrival time of the second customer. The start time will be more tricky because the start time of the second customer will depend on the completion time of the first customer. We'll need to check whether the first customer has finished using the ATM. So the formulas it is determined depending on whether the arrival time of the second customer is greater than the completion time of the first customer. To express that, we use if function equals sign if. The if function works like this. The first parameter 
is the logical if condition. What we have here is that if the arrival time of the second customer is greater than the completion time of the first customer. That means when the second one comes in, the first one has already finished with the ATM. If this is true, start time will be equal to arrival time of the second customer. Thus, when he arrives, he can immediately start using the machine. Otherwise, he has to wait until the first customer is done with ATM. And do not forget the close parenthesis. So with this trial, we have the arrival time is at 8 minutes. And the completion time of the first customer is at 6.4 minutes. That's why he can start immediately. Formula for the waiting time is still the same. Waiting time is equal to start time minus arrival time. So I just copy it down. The service time is generated with a normal distribution. So still the same. And since I already used the absolute references for mean and standard deviation, I can just drag this down. So you can see that when I drag this down, we copy the formula and the random value will change since we have relative references. We use absolute reference for mean and standard deviation so they will stay the same. In other words, the formula always refers back to the same cells. The completion time formula is also the same. Formula for the time in the system is also the same. Now we have all formulas set up. We can recalculate the random value by hitting F9. Let's see how it works. So the first customer arrives at 4 minutes and he can start immediately at 4 minutes. The waiting time is 0. It takes him 2.4 minutes to complete all banking transactions. And the completion time is at 6.4 minutes. The time in the system is 2.4 minutes. As for the second customer, the generated random value is very small, 0 0.0007. That means the interval time is very small. The second customer arrives almost immediately, like a fraction of a second later. So this number shows that he arrives at 4.02 minutes. At this time, the first customer is still using his machine. That is why the second customer still have to wait. Thus, the start time for the second customer is the same as the completion time of the first customer. For this second trial, the waiting time is 2.4 minutes. And the service time is only 0.4 minutes. The completion time is at 6.8 minutes, and the total time in the system is 2.8 minutes. Remember, he only used 0.4 minutes for service, but he has to wait in line for 2.4 minutes. So everything looks correct with the formulas. Please note again that the random function generates any value between 0 and 1. Therefore, when you do this practice, you'll get different answers from my answers. That is why it is important to check the first and the second trials very carefully. Because after that, we just copy all formulas over. As the textbook explains, the first 100 trials are mainly for starting up the system. So we will not use them. We will run another 900 trials. And we use these 900 trials for calculation of the outcomes. Since the simulation has been set up correctly, we just need to copy the formulas. Since we start the simulation at row 14, we just need to drag these down to row 10, 13. You can see the number of trials in. What we are doing is to copy all formulas from the second customer down to the thousandth customer. And all the numbers look the same because, again, the system has not recalculated. We need to recalculate it by hitting F9. We can see that everything is recalculated. Note that for different customers, we have different random values, different random waiting times, different parameters, and different outcomes. Now we will calculate some outcomes for the purpose of system evaluation. Since we have many rows, I will use a tool called freeze pane, which in the view tab in here, 
so I can scroll down from the middle row to the last row and still can see the variable names. We have all experimental results of the simulation model and now we can create some outcomes or statistics of this system. The first one is number of waiting which refers to the number of customers that have to wait in line for the ATM. Basically, this column shows the waiting times for all customers. And we want to count the number of customers that actually have to wait. To do that, we count the number of rows that the waiting time is greater than zero. We will use the count if function. This function has two parameters, range and criteria. The range of this one is within row F. We start with the trial 101. Again, as mentioned before, we skip the first 100 trials. Since the trial started at row 14, we'll count from row 114. We select the range from self F114 to F1013. The criteria parameter shows the condition, in this case it means any number that greater than zero. Remember that for count if function, you have to use quotation mark for the condition, greater than zero, and close quotation mark, close parenthesis, and hit enter. The result shows that 502 out of 900 customers have to wait. The next outcome is the probability of waiting. What is the probability of waiting? In this case, we have a very simple formula. The probability of waiting is equal to the number of waiting divided by the total number of customers. In this calculation, the total number is 900 customers. The result shows a probability of about 55%. Next is average waiting time. This is an interesting statistic as well. To calculate this outcome, we use average function. So parenthesis, average, the range is F114 to F1013. The result shows the average waiting time at 0.78 minutes, which is not too bad. Then we'll look at the maximum waiting time. Here we use max function with the same range F114 to F1013. The maximum waiting time is 5 minutes. Overall, the average waiting time is about 0.78 minutes and the maximum waiting time is 5 minutes. The textbook also suggests calculating utilization of ATM. Basically, it calculates the percentage that the ATM machine is being used. To calculate this, we have the total service times divided by the time lapse, which is the difference between the beginning and the end of the whole trials. So we have equal sign, sum of all service times, which is G114 to G1013. Then it is divided by the time difference between the trial 101 and the trial 1000. Remember, we skip the first 100 trials. That is why we have H1013 minus H114. The results of this formula shows the utilization of the ATM is 79%. That means the machine is being used for 79% of the time. Quite effective, right? Some other statistics that you can calculate is number of waiting more than one minute or the number of customers that have to wait more than one minute. We also use count if function, same as count if we used before. We just need to change the condition. Count if the range stays the same as F. 114 to F1013. So the condition is greater than one minute. 
So for example, the customer survey may say one minute is an acceptable waiting time. The bank manager is interested in how many customers actually have to wait more than one minute. Anything more than one minute might result in customer complaints. Let's look at our results. The number of customers that have to wait more than one minute is 312. Thus, out of 900 customers, more than 300 of them have to wait for more than one minute. Now, what is the probability of this? The probability of waiting more than one minute is equal to this number 312 divided by 900, which is about 35%. From practical perspective, the decision makers or bank managers would look at these outcome statistics and decide if these outcomes are acceptable or not, and whether they should add another ATM machine in the branch. Now you can see in here, due to the changes of random values, you may get different answers. But those outcomes actually should be close to these and should not be too far apart. So let's say we recalculate again and see some changes, but not much. We have F9 to recalculate the whole thing, and by doing that, we can see if the system works or not. So, I do not get exact answer as a textbook, but my answers are close. And the more trials we use, the closer the outcomes will be. Let's say if we run it for 10 thousand times the outcomes will be closer so this is how to build and run a waiting line simulation with one atm using excel thank you and bye now